Hi, you may notice I have my headphones on. That means we're talking about audio today. Yay! Today we're taking another step down the path of professional audio mixing in DaVinci Resolve. We're gonna be talking about automation, which is not as automatic as it might seem, but it is a really cool tool with some pretty, pretty big limitations. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video to find out what those limitations are and what you can do about them. Now, for those of you who don't know, automation is basically the process of recording your actions on an audio mixer. So you can automate things like volume and panning and EQ, and DaVinci Resolve. You can even automate the different settings for third-party plugins, which is pretty, it's pretty sweet. Let's jump into DaVinci Resolve. I'm gonna show you everything that you need to know. First of all, we've got a timeline here. If I zoom out on this timeline, this is actually the video that I put out last week about my entire post-production process. If you haven't seen that, I highly suggest you do. It'll be linked in the description below. For now, we've got our timeline here. We're in the Fairlight page. This is all of my audio here. We've got some dialogue clips that we're not gonna touch today. We've got some sound effects clips that we are gonna touch today, and we've got some music clips that we're definitely gonna touch today. So here's how to set up automation. We're gonna go ahead and come up right next to our loop button. There's this little icon that looks like some rope that's being pulled between two pulleys. That's not what that is. Those are actually keyframes in case you didn't know. Now you know, you're welcome. Let's go ahead and click on that icon. And this is gonna bring up all of our top level automation settings. So we've got right and trim. Don't need to worry about trim today. We're just doing right. In fact, nine times out of 10, you're only going to be doing right because that is what we need in order to do automation, in order to record our movements. We are writing our movements. Next, we go over to touch. Touch, you don't really need to worry about unless you have a Fairlight audio mixing console. I don't have one. I don't know anybody who does have one. They're expensive. They take up a lot of space. So we're not worried about that. On stop, this is basically telling DaVinci Resolve what it's going to do when you stop playing. Is it going to record an event? Is it going to hold your current settings? Is it going to return to the previous settings? You can tell DaVinci Resolve whatever you need it to do. And then next to that, you're enabling what you're going to be automating. So you can do fader, you can do mute, pan, EQ, compression, limiter, gate, sends, plugins, miscellaneous. I don't know what miscellaneous is. I've never clicked the button. Maybe one day I will. Now, you might think that we're gonna start with fader because one, it's first in the list. And two, because when most people think of audio automation, they're thinking of the faders. They're thinking of those those video clips of faders going up and down automatically. We're not touching fader yet. We'll do fader later. We're not doing it at <laughs> fader later, that rhyme. For now, we're doing pan because I want to do something with one of the sound effects. So let's go ahead and click on pan. Actually, you know what? We're going to be doing fader as well at some point. So we'll just do fader and we'll do EQ because we're going to do some EQ work as well. So first, let's come down to A5. This is my Foley track. I've got a clip on here that I want to work on. It's this very first clip here. If I I solo this, I'll play it for you. It's just a sound effect of a camera rolling. There you go, pretty simple. What I wanna do is pan this from left to right so it follows the movement of the camera. We're gonna do it quick and dirty because honestly, automation takes a lot of finesse, a lot of timing, a lot of control, and I'm trying to get this video done. So I'm not gonna sit here and do it over and over and over again. I'm just gonna show you the basics. Was that a fly? So we've got our track here. Let's go ahead and arm this for automation by clicking the little keyframe icon right there there. We're going to make sure we're at the beginning of our track. We're going to make sure that this drop down box is gone to pan and left and right pan. You can see you can do front to back pan. You can do spread, rotate, divergence, just a whole bunch of stuff. We're going to do left to right pan here. And now let's expand our mixer and open up the pan tool for audio five. That's this little crosshairs right here with the blue dot. Now, like I said, we're going to be starting all the way over on the left. So we just need to bring this over to the left. And then what we'll do is we will play our clip and as it's playing, we're going to move this left to right fader over to the center. Go ahead and do that now. 
Not bad, right? Now we went a little bit too far. We want one right. We want this to be on center. So in order to fix that, we're gonna come over to the end. We're gonna arm this for automation again. We're just gonna double click on left, right to bring that to center. And we're just gonna play for a little bit. And now everything is back the way it should be. All right, let's go ahead and close out of the pan tool. Next thing we're going to do, actually, I wanna show you one more thing. Look, if we come back here, open up this again, and we go back, you can actually see if we play this, you can see that pan tool is moving automatically. That's why it's called automation. Yay. All right, so another thing that I do actually pretty frequently is with my music. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go ahead and let's get out of this pan tool and we'll close out our mixer here. Not close it out, just shrink it down. And now on this music track here, Audio 7, I guess I shouldn't have closed that out. Let's go back to Audio 7. This is my music track. You can see that I've actually dropped down my 1K frequency to about minus 12 dB. And that's because this is my background music. And when you bring down that frequency, it'll actually help your voice shine through a little bit more. It'll make sure that the music isn't interfering with your dialogue. The only problem is that kind of makes the music sound weird when it's only music. So at the very end of the video, when the music comes back up, I actually want that EQ, I want that band to come back up. So how do we do that? Well, we can't keyframe it like we would anything else because there's no keyframes on the EQ. We have to automate it. Let's go ahead and move down to the very end of our timeline. Here's where I stop talking here. We're gonna come over here to the end of our dialogue and we're gonna expand our timeline a little bit. We're going to expand our audio track a little bit. And I've already set this up for EQ, band four, gain. We're gonna go ahead and arm this for recording, or for automating rather. We're gonna back up a little bit and we're gonna play. And as soon as I'm done talking, we're gonna go ahead and bring that band up. All right, there we go. If we play that back, this time we'll just play the music. And if you watch this band here, there you go. We've now automated our EQ for that track. All right, next thing I need to do real quick is just bounce my music and my sound effects to new tracks here. And while that's busy bouncing to a new track, I'm gonna take my headphones off, let my ears breathe a little bit and let you know that all of the music and sound effects that I got for this video were from today's sponsor, Artlist. Artlist is where I get all of the music and sound effects for all of my videos. They are phenomenal. They've got this unlimited license so you can actually use anything you download from there wherever you want, whenever you want on a commercial plan. And yes, I'm specifying commercial plan because they just launched new personal plans that only cover social media, but their monthly plans instead of annual plans. So that's super, super cool. Another really cool thing about Artlist is their For You page where you can go and see curated songs that they think you'd like based on stuff you've downloaded in the past. They've even got curated genres. Like they always show hip hop beats for me because I use them in basically every YouTube video I make. Artlist has a ton of stuff that you can use to get an amazing sound design in your videos. So they'll be linked below if you wanna check them out. If you sign up using that link, you'll actually get two free months on an annual plan, which is really, really cool. Thanks so much to Artlist for sponsoring this video and for supporting creators like me. We're, we're bounced, let's get back to it. We need to work on the volume for our music, it's way out of control. We don't need to worry about sound effects. I did that all in the mix. I just set all the levels individually for the sound effects. For music though, we're gonna do some automation. So let's come over to our music final track. We're going to arm that for automation. We're gonna make sure it's on fader level. Then we're gonna come over to our mixer, come to our MX final track, and we're gonna start this off down at, let's say minus 20, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna play and we're just gonna start automating based on where the dialogue starts and stops.
You've done your filming, you've brought your footage into your computer, and now you're ready to start editing. Here's the question. Where do you start? Well, today we're gonna go through my personal step-by-step post-production workflow for YouTube, and along the way, I'm gonna give you some tips to help you make better videos. Let's go. Oh, I messed that one up. Like I said, finesse, practice, it takes a bit to get it right. We're gonna try and bring this up so it hits minus 14 dB. It's a tiny little number, even on my screen, so it's hard to see. And along the way, I'm gonna give you some tips to help you make better videos. Let's go. All right, so where do you start? What do you do first? Or what do I do first, I guess, is the better question to ask. The first thing that I do after I film a video is I review. I can live with that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come all the way to the end of the video, set our play ahead, arm for automation. And we're gonna bring this back up to minus 14 dB right after I stop talking. So on the best export settings for YouTube, you can check that out right here. Thanks for watching. Then we'll go back down in just a minute. Now, like I said, there are a couple limitations to automating this stuff in DaVinci Resolve. The first one is you can only do this at the track level. You can't do automation on individual clips. If you want to do that, you need to do regular old keyframes, but then that means you can't do things like automating your EQ or your panning. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't have keyframing available in DaVinci Resolve, so that kind of sucks. But if you can learn how to organize your tracks so that you can do things all at the track level, then that's fine, it's a moot point, you're good to go. The other big limitation with automating in DaVinci Resolve is you can only automate one thing per track. This is why I did my EQ work in one of my music tracks and then bounced it to a new track to do the volume. It's kind of a, it's kind of a pain, I'll be honest, I think if you have a Fairlight mixing console, then you can actually automate more than one thing at a time, but don't quote me on that, I don't know. But for now, if you're just using the software, you can only automate one thing per track, which is why it's so important to learn how to bounce your audio. To learn how to do that, click here and yeah, thanks for watching.